St. Rose, come. Uh, thank God for our obedience. Amen. <laughs> Let's lift them up in prayer. Heavenly Father, uh, we lift up this uh, this car accident that took place on St. Rose Road. And Father, if I made that mistake, you know exactly where it's at. And Father, we just lift up the souls that were in that wreck. Above all, Father God, I pray that they know you, Lord Jesus Christ. And Father God, we just lift up those families, Father. And whenever the enemy does something like this, Lord, you know exactly how we feel. And we know, Father, that you hurt for us with compassion. But Father, I'm thankful that you give us the power to, to pray and to speak that everything's okay. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's beloved said, Amen. Amen. Praise God. God bless you guys. Huh? Are you guys happy to be here? Amen. 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 Mama Kate's here. Praise God. Huh? I'm so happy, so excited to be here. Right, Brother Logan? I mean, it's a choice. Amen. It's a choice. So without further ado, let's get into it. We're going to be in Luke 15. And we only got a few verses to go through. However, as far as when we go through this, I want to say this is something that I've been wanting to preach for over a couple years. Yes. And I got a little crunchy because my better half, you guys know Pastor John, he got to preach on it a couple times. And of course, I was like, well, Holy Spirit, I wanted to preach on that. And glory to God today, all days, Holy Spirit said, now's the time. Amen. And the title of this worship service is called Reckless Love. So you guys, many of you are turning to your Bible, so you already know the story. So hear my heart. We already know the story of the prodigal son. We already know it. So we're going to preach it the way Holy Spirit wants it to. And it's a test for me because I want to preach it a certain way, but I have no idea what God has in the story. Amen. So let's get right into this. When he came to his senses, let's pause right there. When he came to his senses, Hi, Miss Charlotte. When he came to his senses, this story picks up. Lord Jesus talking about this story of this prodigal son that told his father, just give me my money. I want nothing to do with you. Give me my inheritance now. If you truly examine this story, what this child said to his father was, go on and die. I don't care nothing about you. Just give me mine. Is that harsh enough? Or do we need to get harsh into that? That's harsh enough? So, so the, right there he said, I want nothing to do with you. Give me my inheritance. And what he did, he squandered it. He lived a life of perversion. I mean, he was just making it rain everywhere, you know? I mean, that's truly what he was doing. With all the money, he was just spending it left and right. He found himself in a pig pen. He found himself in a pig pen. And the guy that owned the land let him take care of the pigs and everything. And he came to his senses at one point whether it was early in the morning or maybe later that evening, when he's watching these pigs eat and he said, what am I doing? God right now is calling out to each one of us to come to our senses. You see, I don't want to die and my very next breath is in hell. Hell is a real place. Can I get an amen? amen? I really believe that as a Christian, as a pastor, even, you know, just going to church, we preach about the goodness of God, we preach about heaven, we preach about the promises of the Lord, we preach about prosperity, we preach about healing and miracles and breakthrough, we preach about all, which is true because that is who our Father is. However, what we need to start doing is realizing that there is a hell. And in this hell, This prodigal son got a taste of it. Now, how many of you have been around pigs? Praise God. Look, look. <laughs> I haven't. That's why I'm going to look because I'm like, man, I asked the right bunch right here. Everybody, everybody in the room said, huh? I had, I had no idea. So maybe y'all should grab a microphone, right? All I know from reading about pigs. <laughs> I know it sounds silly, from reading about pigs, from looking at pigs from afar, because Trish and I are goofy like that. If we're driving somewhere that we don't know and we see animals, we'll pull off the side and we'll just watch them. Pigs are nasty. Yes, they are. See, and you can't get that from a book. 
Right? I can Google pigs all day long. I don't know how they smell. Ain't that the truth? It's, it's nasty, right? They stink. They're gross, right? They're adorable. What? Oh, come on now. Oh my God. Listen, listen. Listen, let's review any church splits, okay? If you think they're ugly, that's fine. I'll right, we'll pray for you. I think they're adorable. I mean, anyway. But could you imagine as far as this? Once in a once in, once in a upon a time, I guess I could say, he was a millionaire. Lived his life, had all this fun, and now he's with the pigs. And he came to his senses, Brother Logan. The question I have for you is. At what point in your life, in your walk with God, that you came to your senses? See, with me personally, it was when the doctor said that, that's it, you're going to die. I came to my senses. I, I, I couldn't stand the fact that I was going to go into ground and I did nothing for the Lord. I couldn't stand that fact, Elder Howard. When the doctor said that, I said, I just lived a life of selfishness of all, of all the things that I wanted. I wasn't even a good husband. I wasn't, I wasn't even, I'm just confessing to you. I treated her like dirt. I, the only way I showed her love was just buying her things. Because that's how I thought happiness was. What do you mean you're sad? I just bought you. Right? And I would try to defend that. Listen, I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I had to come to my senses when the doctor said there's nothing we can do. Maybe your story isn't that extreme, but I pray that we come to our senses. You see, it's up to you and God to, for you to come to your senses. Coming to your senses doesn't have to call for you being on that operating table and the doctor saying we don't know what to do. Believe it or not, we can choose right now to come to our senses. Can I hear an amen? amen? By the grace of God, we can choose to. But guess what? It's up to us to come to those terms with God. And let's continue on the story. This is what he said. I love this picture. It's one of my screensavers on my computer at home. And I have a bunch of different uh, pictures that go on my screen because I know with what Holy Spirit taught me, Brother Wyland, we're visual creatures. As men, we're visual creatures. Women are too, but ours were a faster trigger with visual, sensuality, emotion. Now on the emotion and the discernment, women are gifted in having that discernment, that Holy Spirit gift, amen? But with, with, with guys, oh my goodness. I, the eyeball can move in a fraction of a second. Do y'all know that? One one hundred? Of a second. That's fast. That is so fast. And we know this based on our worship services. You can't always control what you're looking at. As a matter of fact, just today when I was putting together some of the scriptures, an ad came up on my screen. Underwear. I never bought underwear online. A brother like me doesn't buy underwear online. That's a bad idea. Right? I need to be in the store at Walmart stretching that bad boy out. And go, yeah, that's, that's my style right there, right? But unfortunately, this ad wasn't for men's underwear. It was for women. And guess what? Quickly, I looked. Right away, I closed my eyes. And I said, Lord, I, don't, I saw what I saw, but I don't need to see it. Can you get an Amen. I saw what I saw, but I don't mean to see it. Father God, get that out of my head. And I waited for God to say, go ahead and close it. So of course, when you look at the screen, you look for the little X box, which is like this big. You're looking at this underwear on, on a lady. My point is, is that we have to come to our senses. Say with me, senses. In how the devil tries to play his game. If the devil can creep into your thoughts any way he knows how, he will keep using that little spot to try to keep drawing a wedge in your relationship with God. But it's up to us when we come to our senses and you know, Father, I wasn't supposed to see that. 
And Father, I, I, I'm just praying for, for that, that soul right there. And Father, above all, I just pray the Holy Spirit, I know you are in me, your presence, God, is in me. And Father God, I just ask you right now to just give me the strength, the power to just rebuke this in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. And praise God, this is what this son, this prodigal son, realized and accepted when he was in that pig pen. He came to his senses. And this is what he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father. Say it with me, my father. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, say with me, Father. I have sinned against you, against heaven. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Now when we truly study as far as the, the, the word that he is speaking, he is basically telling his daddy, disown me. I don't want any inheritance from you. I just want to survive. That right there that you see, I know it's highlighted in red, but right here in the bold red, make me like one of your hired servants. That he's going to have the heart to tell his daddy, don't even make me your son no more. What I did to you is unthinkable. I sinned against you. I treated you like garbage. I just want to survive, so... Just make me one of the rest of the common folk. But I will not be a part of the household. Can you get an amen? amen? You can just hear the pain in his heart. That he's saying all this stuff while he's with these pigs, right? How many of you have been in the pig pen? Oh, numerous times, right? There's many kind of pig pens we can get into. Mine was addiction, right? Mine was addiction. Started off with just smoking weed here and there at 11 years old. You know, that's a baby. Right? And then it opened up to a whole, uh, it just opened it, and it was just pig pen after pig pen after pig pen. Maybe sometimes a, a pig pen, could, it doesn't have to be necessarily an addiction. A pig pen could be a, a bad relationship from the past. Right? An ex. Come on, somebody. <laughs> a lot of people just cringe, right? Well, by the grace of God, we don't pray for them, right? We don't hold nothing against them. Why? Because if we harbor any unforgiveness, God says, I got nothing to do with you. Everything has to go back to coming to our senses that Jesus Christ is Lord. And when we know, Brother Logan, that Jesus is Lord, that means that no matter what has happened to my life or what is happening to me, I got no right to be upset about it. I want to forgive you and forget because my Lord Jesus Christ did that for me. Can I get an amen? amen. Hallelujah. But now this is real talk now. We say we're Christians. We say that we're children of God. We say that we know Lord Jesus. We say that the spirit of the resurrection of Lord Jesus Christ, His name is Holy Spirit. Say His name. We say that Holy Spirit lives on the inside. Because that's what happens when you receive Lord Jesus. When you receive Him, Lord, I receive you, Lord. I receive you, Lord Jesus Christ. You are my Lord and Savior. What we don't know, but what the truth is, and what God said the truth is, you're crucified in Christ. Galatians 2.20 says that. And now I live, but I don't live like, oh, I'm Joey. No, I live because the Spirit of God now lives inside of me. And that Spirit of God lives in every one of us as His children, right? So if the Spirit of God lives inside of you, and God is continuously saying, come to your senses. Come to your senses, right? I'm doing this because it's like, wake up. Right? Wake up. This is the reason why almost in every worship service, I personally, I know Pastor John does too, preach till I'm blue in the face. Why? Because... The time is now for us to get right with the Lord. If we choose not to, we don't know what's going to happen at this very next moment. For crying out loud, there are people dying left and right all around the world with this thing that cannot be seen. You cannot see COVID. You cannot see cancer. You can see what it does when it, when it affects the body. And this is why we preach the gospel true, according to 
is that I want more Jesus Christ. Because as a true child of God, His resurrection power lives in you. And when He is in you, He manifests the power and the presence of God. And you know that I am a child of God and nothing of this world can affect me because my house is covered by your blood, Father God. Amen? Amen. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Are we coming to our senses? I understand that we all go through things. Can I get an amen? We all go through things. We all have aches. Okay, my goodness, just the other day I couldn't walk. You guys think I'm making this up? That's Trish. I couldn't. But just because I can't walk and I'm in so much pain doesn't change who my God is. Oh, come on now, somebody. Just because I don't feel good doesn't change who my God is, Brother Logan. My God is a good God. He's good and perfect. He sent Jesus to save me. Lord Jesus died for me. Which means that there is no question about how much my God loves me. Because my Lord Jesus stands in the gap. Does your Lord Jesus Christ stand in the gap for you? Always. Amen. Does Lord Jesus Christ stand for you? Amen. So he got up, went to his father, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and filled with compassion for him, he ran to his son. <sighs> Threw his arms around him and kissed him. Listen, beloved child of God, I don't know what you've done in your life. And I don't know where you got to be at this point where, you know... I'm sorry that there's people that hurt you. I'm sorry that there's religious folks that judge you and hurt you. I'm sorry that things happen in your life and you just wanted to run away from God. And you're like, you know what, God, I want nothing to do with them. You and I, were cool, right? But let me say something to you. There's this devil and he's a liar and a deceiver. Amen. And what this devil wants to do is he wants to put a separation with you and God's people. And he wants to put you and lock you away in a pig pen. Yes. And so that you can go on and think. Go on and think all those things. But don't you get around those Christians. Because they're going to hurt you. They're going to judge you. They're going to act like they're better than you. Am I the only one that's felt that way in my life? Yeah. Come on. Preach it. But by the grace and mercy of God, here you are tonight. There's people on Facebook listening that I'll never meet. I'll never meet them. But I pray in Jesus' name that Holy Spirit gets a hold of their heart and that they know that, you know what, I need to come to my senses. I need to get right with my God. Lord Jesus Christ died for every soul in this world. We say that all the time, amen? amen. But Lord Jesus Christ, He's coming back for His body, which is His church. Which means if you're not part of a church. I had to tell somebody this week. Knew the Bible. Great discussion. And I said, what brother, what church you go to? Oh, I don't believe in going to church. Well, you just don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ then. Well, what do you mean I don't believe? How can you say that we've had this discussion? You know I know the Bible. You know I know the Lord. Even the devil knows the Lord. But what you just said right there, that you don't need to go to church, Christ died for the church. Can I get an amen? Come on, Hank. Help me out now. Help me. Help me. Brother Donnie, come on now. Help me out. Christ died for the church. So how can you tell me that you are a follower, a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, when you say, I don't need the church? Come on, Bill. Say, you can read Acts. Get over that book, huh? Got to need a different version. Got a different version. All right. And how come uh, you got people go to church and tell the doors open, but they don't believe in God? Yeah. We got it. We got it. Is it true? Yeah. So, I kind of said, how come you got? I just kind of said, how come you got people going to church every time the doors open, but they truly don't believe in God? Many of you said, pray for them, amen. And that's the truth. Pray for them, amen. right? Pray for them. I'm thankful that they're coming. Amen? I'm thankful. I'm thankful that they're coming. Because remember, this word coming to our senses, oh, it carries a lot of weight. Because here's the promise of God Almighty. You ready for this, Brother Wyland? Every soul, Brother David, you hear this? Every soul 
will come to their senses one day. And that day, that day is when you're standing right before Lord Jesus Christ. Every soul will come to their senses on that glorious day. Amen? Praise God. How you doing, Y'all, y'all, y'all are early, y'all are early for, Friday, for Friday. Praise God. <laughs> The son said to him, listen to this family. Here we are in verse 21. This is what the son said to him. Now remember, he's making his way back to the house. But little does he know the father. My question to you, beloved. How many days was the father out there like this? I believe with every all his might, every waking moment, right? He's like, my, my child is out there. Logan, this is what God did for you, bro. And glory to God, you came. And with no judgment, he came running. Amen. Amen. Say with me, Father came running. Hallelujah. And when God comes running after you, when God comes running after you, there's no greater feeling. Because all insecurities are washed away. All doubt. All that garbage, right? Because you know that as... Can you imagine? He was just making his way. You know that his head must have been down. I'm sorry, last time I checked, a prisoner a prisoner doesn't walk around... Is that a prisoner? No. A prisoner who got caught and is in shame and is as guilty, right? Right? And so you can just imagine him walking back home and he's just, and he's running through the rehearsal of what he's going to say. And then he looks up and you could just see his father just. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Now let's pause right here because remember, in verse 18 and 19, he said that he was going to tell the father, make me like one of your hired servants. Remember? He was rehearsing this in the pen, pig pen, right? Help me, family. Do you remember? Yes. yes. Remember, the spirit of faith, 2 Corinthians 4, 13, the spirit of faith is believing and speaking. So I don't care if I annoy you when I ask you to speak. Because in the name of Jesus, you need to practice using these weapons. Amen. You need to practice speaking these weapons. Amen. 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 You need to practice speaking life. Speak blessings. Speak. The devil ain't got nothing on me. Speak. Amen. I'm a child of God. Speak. That Lord Jesus Christ died for me. Why? When you speak these things, the devil says, I can't. Satan himself says, the blood. The blood of Jesus is over this person. I can. And the more you speak, the more you speak, the sword of Holy Spirit just keeps on cutting, cut, get away, get out of here. Get, 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 get. get away. Addiction has no right in my family. Sickness has no right. Nothing. Amen. Come on up, speak. Say what you speak. So he said, make me like one of your hired servants. That's what he was rehearsing. And so he meets his father, and his father, that oh my goodness, you could just imagine the reunion. You could just imagine at first, he's like, Dad. And he starts, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Check this out. That's a big butt now. That's a big butt on that screen. Are y'all ready for this? Verse 22. But the father said to the servant, notice how God is. Here is God saying right now, if you call me Lord Jesus Christ and you receive me, you are always my child. Amen. So you cannot even say that I'm going to treat you like
I got hired and serving because you are my blood, you are my children, you're my child, and I love you. Amen? Amen. And there's nothing that's going to come against them. Amen? Amen. Say what you want. Yeah. This is what the Father said to the servant. Bring the best robe and put it on and put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fat calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. Hallelujah. Yeah. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. Was lost and is found. This recovers. Amen. So they began to celebrate. Hallelujah. Give God praise. This is your story. This is your story. You can see what took place. From the point of the pig pen. Listen, there's something right now in the pig pen. I pray in Jesus' name you don't walk out this church and still live in the pig pen. I pray that in the name of Jesus Christ that you make that decision today. That I want to man up. You're a woman, I want to woman up. I come to my senses. I know Holy Spirit speaking to you and through you. And I ask you, Lord Jesus Christ, to just change me, Lord. I don't want to be the same. I refuse to live my life, me personally. Listen, I'm not picking on anybody. I'm throwing myself under that bus. I refuse to live my life the same every day. Amen. I want God to bless me in everything that he paid for. Can I get amen? Brother Joy, what did he pay for? He paid for every good and perfect thing. Amen? amen. All of it. Hallelujah. Every good and perfect thing. You see a Savior that was sent from heaven. You see what this Savior did for you and me. Here lately we live in such an evil world. Here lately just we come across a lot of people that just, they blame God for what the devil's doing. And it takes a crazy brother with a bun to tell him, in your life there's no devil. You just blame everything on God. The devil has it easy in your life. He's not on your radar. You don't blame the devil for nothing. You just blame my God. But what you miss is, there's this God. His name is Jesus. And this God of mine left heaven because the Father God said so. And this God of mine came to show me who God really is. And who the devil is. And that same God lives inside of me. If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that same God lives inside of you. There's no difference. See, the only limitation that God has is what we put on Him. Is that ministering to somebody right now? See, Sister Latanya, Latanya, I can tell you every day. Sister Latanya, you are just blessed. You're anointed. You're in the overflow. Your smile just brings joy and laughter. You have this peace and anointing. I can tell you everything that God's telling me about you. And you know I have. Even with your beloved fiance. I've told you, Brother Sidney. But you know what? If you choose not to believe it, and you run with emotions and with feelings, even God Almighty is saying, there's nothing left to be done. You see, beloved family, God did a perfect work through the cross. There's nothing lacking in the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't it beautiful? You can have two souls standing right here. I can be full on, sold out for Lord Jesus Christ and be choose to be thankful every day for my perfect Savior. And that how much God loves me because Lord Jesus, through all the torture, through the beating, through the cussing, through the ripping of his beard and his hair, through pushing the thorns on his head, through just getting flogged and just getting beaten and bleed, I can tell God, thank you that you love me that much. And you can have another to stand right here and go, well, what about me, God? How come you're not blessing me, God? Look at what I got to put up with. Look at all this going on. Do you see the difference in heart? Amen. My question to you is, where are you at with the Lord? Have you come to your senses? Because remember, when Lord Jesus Christ talks about this prodigal son that was in the pig pen, Lord Jesus Christ went to the pig pen. Look at the screen. Yeah. 
And in this pig pen, this place is called hell. And Lord Jesus Christ, who knew no sin, who wasn't sin, he became sin. Can you believe that? Our perfect God, he took all of your sin. Every foul thing that I've done, which is a lot, I beat all you all. Every foul thing Lord Jesus Christ took it upon his body. And he said, now that I took that, I give you what I deserve. Let me ask you something. What does Lord Jesus Christ deserve? Everything. Everything. Amen. Can you stand up on your feet with me? We only have one song that's going to play tonight. I pray that during this song that we come to a moment with the Lord of repentance. What is this word repentance? Father, I'm going to come to you as if this is my first time. Forgive me. Enough games. Beloved daughter, you can play games with God all you want. You know this. As your pastor, I'm looking right at you. But it's up to you to say, God, I'm done playing. I'm done playing these games. Right? Beloved son of God, you know this. We can take God down a road that we were never intended. God will never let you go. God will never let you go. But my question to you is, when are we going to come to our senses? Do we want to come to our senses in that moment where... What happens in that moment where you just, in a twinkle of an eye, you're like, oh, Lord. I pray that he says, well done. I have so much fear that day. I have so much fear as a pastor of my church family. We pray for you guys every day, but can I confess you sometimes I feel like it's not enough? I don't want to see any money all go to hell. You know what hell is like? It's the absence of God. It's the absence of hope. It's the absence. You want to know what hell is like? You could be in torture for eternity and you look up and you can see your loved ones in heaven. And you're screaming. Can you imagine? Can you imagine screaming, I'm trash, trash, look at me, man, I'm not trash. <gasps> this is real. Yeah. And listen, I'm not here to tell you a story. I'm not, I'm telling you what the living God is telling you. But it's your choice to be this close with the Lord. I pray in Jesus' name that we all see this day. Look, I even put a bun on that guy. Amen. I pray that we all see this day here real soon. Amen. Listen, I say it all the time. I see it to people. I don't, I don't, I'm not speaking that. I believe that we're going to be raptured out of here. I believe we're not going to taste death. I believe that sky is going to open. Lord Jesus is coming back for us. And then chaos is going to hit. There's going to be hell on earth. When we're raptured out of here, when you got planes falling out of the sky, when you got, when you got vehicles that are just piling on top of each other, when you got murders and rapes all around town. You can't even go to the store because you're afraid of all the riots and the chaos. There's going to be no military that can hold it back. Because God took his church. There's going to be hell on this earth. And guess what? There's still going to be people that are still not going to believe in Jesus. I'm asking us, beloved church family, Facebook... Can we take this moment? We only got one song. I said it before. Can we take this moment that, Lord, I just want to bless you with all of my heart and all of my mind. I ask you for, to forgive me, Father, in any way that I live life thinking that I can just do whatever I do, say whatever I want to say, act however I want to act. And Lord Jesus, I just want to bless you in your altar. If that's you, just come to this altar. Amen.